Context is everything. Context is everything. Now, at some point or another, you probably heard the parable of the blindfolded men with the elephant, who are each asked to describe what an elephant is. And blindfolded, one grabs around the leg and says, an elephant is like a great trunk of a tree. One grabs the snout, grabs it by the trunk and says it's long and snake-like. One grabs it by the tail and says it's small and bushy. And the point of the story is, outside of the complete context, you can't know anything. You can't know what an elephant is like. Until you can step back and say, all of these are parts of the elephant, and this is what it is like. Context. And most of the time in the universe in which we live, brothers and sisters, we do not get the full picture. This is as old as the fall into sin, and the first liars are created. Swindlers and con men and liars and thieves politicians, did I say that out loud? <laughs> People who make their living off of showing you one part of the picture, the media, the press, anybody online that benefits financially by clicks and likes and shares and grabbing your attention with a headline, with a half-truth, convincing you, based on your blindfolded self, that a plague of elephant trunks is coming when you don't know what the whole elephant looks like. Convincing us of the disaster that is impending if we don't do this or that. Convincing us to invest our money, to look the other way while they pocket something we didn't even realize they were after. Whatever the lie, the deception, the cheating, the stealing, all of this happens because we are denied the full picture. Because we as mortal beings are not able all the time, to see the whole picture. And in a universe where sin exists after the fall, people and the devil and his demons will figure out how to use that against us. Context is everything. And when we don't have a full picture, we don't make the right decisions. That is what Paul is getting at in our epistle. Paul uniquely is writing to a population of Christians that is new. This is a time when the gospel is spreading, when people who converted from the pagan Roman and Greek religion were now Christians, and Paul is further instructing them on life and morals, on context, what it means to live as a person redeemed by Jesus Christ. And he reminds them, of what happened before. Remember, he said, the things you lived in when you were idolaters, the sexual perversions and the deviancy and the pleasure-seeking. He says, what benefit was any of that to you, those things of which you are now ashamed? Deceitfully, those things creep into our lives like anything else in the wrong context. The devil likes to take our God-given desire for togetherness and twist it into sexual perversion. The devil likes to take our God-given need to, to intake sustenance to make us gluttonous and fat. I shouldn't have posted about those cookies earlier this week. <laughs> the devil uses every God-given feature of the context of our existence against us to use us, manipulate us, and twist everything into unhealthy, unhealthful and unhelpful ways of existing. He puts us in a false context of being by feeding us a set of lies also based on false context. You and I live with that struggle every day, even as believers in Jesus Christ. One of the things that jumped out at me about the text in the epistle reading is that we see people like that every day on TV, in the news media, on the street. The people that Paul says they used to be, deviants and perverts and the gluttonous and the addicted, and the people that one way or another are drawn into a life 
of incompleteness because of sin, darkness, and the lies of the devil. And yet when Paul is writing this in the epistle, it's who these people used to be. One of the things that we struggle with in the context of our existence is believing that those people can be saved. Believing that those people are as loved as we are by God in Christ. Believing that there's a chance. It's so easy to write people off, to bang our head against the wall long enough to say, well, to heck with it. There's no hope for some of those people. And yet the church to which Paul is writing is made up of folks that used to be those people. He brings it to their attention, the perversions and the decadence and the evil things they did in their idolatry, those things of which you are now ashamed, he says. What profit were any of those things to you? Literally, the epistle is directed at those people who have been changed by the power of the gospel because everything is about context. And when we get ourselves in the right context, that is, a sinner redeemed by Christ, loved in the view and eyes of God, when we get ourselves in the right place in the cosmos, then everything else begins to make sense, or a new sense. If we're rooted in the right place, the lies and machinations of the devil will have minimal to no effect on us. The context of the cross of Jesus Christ is everything. That he has died for the sins of the world, that he has washed us in his blood, that he feeds us his flesh and blood, that there is a spirit inside us welling up to eternal life. In that context then, from that context, Everything about our existence is defined. The context of being people of God in Christ defines how we exist in the universe. What kind of fathers we are, mothers we are, daughters and sons we are. What kind of husbands and wives we are. What kind of employees or employers we are. What kind of laborers we are. How we are when we are healthy and how we are when we are sick how we are in our wretchedness on our deathbed from misery. Everything has provided the context of being one who is forever alive with God in Christ. The world doesn't have the right context. We are living in Babylon, and all of those people, as we would define them, are just Babylonians doing what Babylonians do. As we live in the captivity in Babylon, they are pagans doing what pagans do. They are people loved by God. Enough that he came into the flesh and died for them, and the gospel is for them too. And if the gospel can fix us, if Jesus can heal us of our sins, he can heal anyone of their sins. If he can make us whole and give us eternal life, he can do it for anyone and will and does. Context is everything. Jesus, feeding the crowd miraculously, provides them with a whole new context. He does something that only God can do. He makes something out of nothing. Did you notice? At the wedding feast at Cana, Jesus turns water into wine. He transforms one thing into another. But in the miraculous feedings in the wilderness, and there are more than one, he multiplies the bread. He makes something out of nothing. He does not do what Satan tried to tempt him to do, turn these stones into bread, but he makes something out of nothing, which only God can do. A message of context that will not be lost on many of the crowd. A a proclamation of the gospel to them that he is, in fact, God in the flesh. Because only God makes something out of nothing. And the context of our first reading, the creation of the world. God creates us in his image. God has created the cosmos out of nothing. But wait, there's more. That context all lines up 
with what is our position in the universe as one redeemed by Christ. And if that is defining everything about us, then we have the right context. And from the right context, we cannot be deceived or lied to or tricked, not unendingly, not all the time, not constantly, if the context is our life in Christ, in God Almighty. But when these words were written in the Old Testament, when the story of our creation is being written, when was it? Because Adam and Eve did not put pen to paper and record the events of Genesis at the time they took place. The books were written by Moses. Moses is given this information, this revelation, these things to write down while the people are living in the wilderness after the exodus and eating the bread from heaven. That is why the text is paired with Jesus and the miraculous feeding. Because all together the readings give us the context again and again and again. Our place in the universe is nothing else than those who are being preserved, led, redeemed, fed, nourished, defended, uplifted, and recreated by the God who made us from the beginning. The one who can make bread out of nothing can most certainly redeem us sinners and make us saints. The one who can rise from the dead and smash the power of the tomb can most certainly redeem us to everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>